is with the front. The sight of the commission's witness held by your hand was murky at best, before the bright light from your wrist engulfed the room. Blinding everyone, including Kaminari. You felt the release of your hand, leaping and bounding out of the hall and through the dark and empty convention center before you bursted through the doors into the rain. The rumble of thunder thrummed in your ears, leaping over moving cars and bumping through the crowds of umbrellas, ignoring the irate and annoyed reactions of those around you. You ran for miles, never stopping until it was quiet enough to catch your breath. You felt the exhaustion in your lungs, the strain of them attempting to breathe. You've learned that the quirk took a hold on you, as if little by little, your strength waned. It was temporary to say the least, nothing but a few days worth of rest. You soon made your way to an abandoned block of apartments, something you had found after your short stint in the cheap and nasty place you took residence a couple of weeks back. Which floor did you choose this time around? It was a matter of finding a mirror, you thought, making your way into a decrepit room, cold from the storm with a lack of anything to keep the heat in. With heavy steps, you dragged yourself towards the bathroom. It was the first place you'd go, except for the occasional smoke if you had the time. You stumbled into the broken bathroom, dripping wet from the lack of maintenance in protecting it from the storm before you turned your gaze up to your reflection. Seek stared back at you, cold, exhausted, and yet despite the circumstances, he smiled, running his hand through his hair. You noticed the mirror was in condition. No broken cracks or glass to be seen. Something he wasn't able to locate in a while. Perhaps this was an overwhelming sense of joy you felt. Or perhaps... I know you're watching, little Lynx. Wake up. You slowly took deep breaths after snapping out of your reverie, sitting by the park bench watching people pass by with no inkling of your presence. They went about their day, but you sat waiting, eyeing the crowds for a flapping cloak or a familiar set of snake eyes. Ever since that day in interrogation, you saw glimpses into Seek's movements, following his steps, evading all forms of capture, and learning more about him in some way. Over the course of these weeks, you saw all of your friends, your old classmates, involve themselves in the matter, now turning this mishap into a public affair. You had been watching through his eyes, and over the course of the month, you had come to communicate with him though one-sided, throughout his mission. How are you doing? Asked Shinso, his voice a comfort in your ear through the earpiece. I'm fine, you quickly replied. Just tired. Are you positive about this? What if it's a trick? Um, that's why you're here, you reasoned. Like what we talked about, I haven't been wrong for everyone else so far. Just be careful. He could have caught on by now. The thought did cross your mind. However, it still baffled you that he did not lie. Not once. Not during the interrogation or his chaos through Musatafu. He had not lied. You had received visions of his whereabouts 
allowing other pro heroes to locate Seek efficiently and swiftly. Yet, this connection was taking a toll on both himself and you. What made this scenario the strangest of them all was his sudden forward motion to meet. No more chases, no more traps, just a talk. It was a sunny day, a good change of pace from the storm that passed through a few days ago. However, this meeting felt too convenient. Knowing in the back of your mind about recent events that followed after Kaminari and Sarah's failure to capture Seek themselves. You had never seen Kaminari so distraught, having called out of the blue about the Commission's witness under protection that he had introduced that Christmas Eve. Even so, he and Sarah had pertinent information, one that Chinso took it upon himself to collate together. But now, there were more questions than answers, and you felt Seek could be the answer to enlighten them. Was it a good idea to invite the others? Continued Shinso, his tone skeptical. What? We're not good enough for you? Snapped Bakugo in the background. Bakugo, chill. We don't want to compromise the mission here. Spoke Kirishima, a little loudly in your ear. If you got something to say, eyebags, say it. Pay no mind to them. Uttered Todoroki quietly, but enough for you to acknowledge his response. Um, it's for good measure. You started, scanning the park while you reclined on the bench. We've all encountered and experienced what Seek is capable of. Backup plans? Of backup plans. Right. Agreed Shinso, clearly ignoring the small tirade that breathed down his neck from Bakugo. Suddenly, the familiar flap of a cloak caught your eye, spotting Seek walking through the park in broad daylight. He wasn't phased by the crowd. A few eyes stared at his outfit but did not question none the wiser. No one would know if he was a hero or not. You thought while you kept your eye on him, smiling every so often at a few passers-by. You noticed the exhaustion in his eyes, more so than what he was in that interrogation room. The eye bags come as no surprise, smiling inwardly at the thought of Shinso's gaze, yet Seek's exhaustion hit differently. You felt it. His eyes found yours, smiling towards you while he gave a languid wave in the air in greeting. You almost waved back, but held your hand on your lap, nodding in acknowledgement instead while he strolled towards you. I'm surprised you agreed to this, little Lynx. He mused with a tired smile. May I? You nodded in agreement, allowing Seek to sit beside you, staring out into the unassuming crowd of people that crossed your paths. I agree to this to stop the madness, you answered, glancing at Seek next to you. Why did you offer? <laughs> the same sentiment, he replied in jest. I'm not as fit as I used to be, but this cat and mouse is getting a little old. Besides, I've come to the realization that I need help. What kind of help? You've already burnt a bridge with the commission. You highlighted the fact with a raised brow, curious about Seek's mind. True, but this connection we have is becoming unstable. And I'd rather we have both of our minds intact. Seek's snake eyes turned to you his eyelids drooping like heavy curtains. 
He was absolutely wrecked that he almost looked worse for wear than your former teacher Aizawa. Still, in every word he spoke, he was still genuine in his manner and tone. You had already given up in disproving his worth. Ken, you have two minutes. Informed Shinso. The reminder flicked in your head, almost losing count on how long you kept Seek preoccupied before Shinso and any other heroes who arrived to aid would capture him. But again, you felt that he had no intention of running away. How do we go about solving that problem? You asked, finding his lips curl in delight. We have to reverse the source of the problem. He mused. Like how you wind a pocket watch that had stopped ticking. The fact that you can still see what I'm doing and that we are both weighed down by sharing two minds. Well, it's a surprise that you're still sane. What makes you think I'm the one with a lesser mental fortitude? You've shown it in another time, but you were long gone. Again with the cryptic anecdotes, but no inkling of a lie. You glanced at Seek's eyes while they still looked around the park, slightly suspicious of his surroundings, but soon 15, began counting, 14, mumbling 13, under his breath. 12, you listened 11, intently to what he was 10, doing, until you realized that he was eight, counting backwards, seven, counting six, down. He immediately grabbed for your wrist, pulling you towards him while he quickly pressed his thumb firmly on your forehead. It all happened suddenly, while the light from his hand shone brightly, blinding you. The sounds of yells echoed in your head. Recognizing the whip of Shinso's scarf and the scuff of boots that emerged from their hiding spots. I'm proud of you, little lynx. Whispered Seek in the light. Shinso pulled on his mask, setting it upon his collarbone while he sneered at Seek, now sitting on the gravel path tied down by the scarf with his arms bound behind his back. Along with Shinso stood Bakugo, Kirishima, and Todoroki, all of their eyes glaring down at the man that had given them grief over the past month. Huh, <laughs> doesn't look tough now, boasted Bakugo with a sneer. Careful what you think, Ground Zero, warned Kirishima, his eyes suspicious on Seek. He's crafty. Is your partner okay? Asked Todoroki, turning to Shinso with an aloof look while spotting the heap of clothes that sat on the park bench. Shinso walked over to the pile, slowly peeling away a layer to find you. Now a young child, huddled inside the clothes, slightly embarrassed in the circumstance. Shinso's eyes flared back at Seek, walking up to him and yanking at the scarf, forcing Seek up onto his feet. Change them back, demanded Shinso. Seek gazed into his angry eyes, yet only smiled. I said, change them back, demanded Shinso again, tightening the bindings around Seek's arms to cause him some discomfort. Seek grunted from the strain, yet he did not say a word. It only made Shinso's blood boil. Why won't you change them back? Asked Todoroki in place. Because I can't. Answered Seek, calmly and almost immediately. It has to ride its course. Shinso scoffed while he loosened his scarf still keeping Seek bound in their custody. He turned his gaze only to you, watching you fumble inside your clothes, while also clutching onto them to keep you hidden. He carefully watched your movements, 
noticing you fumbling around with the necklace still hanging by your neck. But you need not worry, Persona, spoke Seek, catching Shinso's glare. We're no longer in sync, and it'll all be over in 12 hours. Well, where you're going in 12 hours, you'd be locked up in one of Tartarus' cells, spat Bakugo, grabbing hold of Seek's collar violently, clutching onto it with a tight fist. No, interrupted Shinso. We still need him. The hell? Why? Or are we taking him back to the commission? Asked Todoroki, in kind. No. We need him to answer a few questions. And Red Riot has offered a place we can do so. Explained Shinso, earning the turned and confused looks of both Todoroki and Bakugo. On to Kirishima. Uh... Yeah. He sheepishly answered. Persona asked me yesterday. <laughs> A deep chuckle escaped from Seek's throat. All four heroes turning their attention onto the teal-haired man while a smile appeared on his lips, strangely filled with joy. What's so funny? retorted Bakugo, his palms popping loudly in irritation. I thought I'd never see the day that any of you would be working cohesively together," admitted Seek, smiling happily at the fall. I'm thoroughly impressed. Shut it, asswipe! <laughs> Seek still chuckled happily to himself until a jerk from Shinso caught him off guard, tugging at the scarf that still bound him in custody. Best we get moving before the commission hears word of this advised Shinso, soon spotting his eye on Todoroki picking you up from the bench, hiding you gently in his arms. He stared at your small body, fumbling around with the necklace, feeling a tug on his lips briefly until he started his way with Seek in tow. After a short walk through the city, which came with the curious eyes of the public. All of the heroes reached a small apartment block to a basement area attached to the building, courtesy of Kirishima's partner. They greeted all of the heroes as soon as they arrived, also being obvious of their distaste for the captive in Shinso's binds. A quick tour and cuffing Seek securely to a chair completed the task at hand. However, Shinso wondered about Seek's intentions. This entire time, he had not made any attempts to escape or free himself. He could have sworn that Seek accepted, if not leisurely allowed, to be cuffed in this basement. Still, as soon as everything was secure from the capture, Shinso took you in his arms, thanking Todoroki for keeping you safe. They weren't an issue, remarked Todoroki. They're very well behaved. Lack of a better word. Shinso hummed while he stared down at you, poking at his mask that still sat around his neck. With all the heroes going their separate ways, Shinso advised that he'll return to interrogate Seek as soon as you returned to normal. Needless to say, everyone else agreed. The trip back to your apartment with Shinso was a quiet one. Shinso learned very quickly that you did not speak a word, but you sat comfortably in his arms with no problems at all. He began to worry though. You weren't reacting to anything, whether externally from others or from him. Were you just really quiet? He would turn his heel back towards Seek if he had anything to do with- Don't worry. You piped catching Shinso off guard. He spotted the concerned look on your face, your small hand reaching past his mask and touching his cheek, rubbing as best as you could in an attempt to comfort him. I'm okay. You spoke again with a smile. You look silly when you worry. What? No, I don't. Piped Shinso with a pout, earning a giggle from you. <laughs> See? 
like that you do. Shinso grumbled before he discovered that he made it to the apartment, entering the foyer to take the elevator up to the floor. As soon as he entered the apartment, he felt the caress of Toka's body against his legs, curious of what was in his arms. Oh, you're probably not going to be happy, warned Shinso before he placed you on the couch. Walking away to locate something more suitable than the overwhelmingly large clothes that swallowed you whole. Shinso entered the bedroom, still messy from the morning rush, from the both of you preparing this civil arrest, or so the both of you would label it as. He trekked through the mess, eyeing the crumpled linen and the pillows strewn all over the bed chuckling under his breath on how tangled the both of you were before the alarms blared in the room. Going through the drawers and cupboards yielded a few items of clothing that were suitable enough to keep you clothed in your state. Shinso just dove into your drawers and picked out a handful of shirts that he had not seen you wear in a while, hoping that should you return to normal, you wouldn't question the choice. He made his way back out towards the lounge, rounding the couch to offer you a set to choose from when- Don't blame me. I went through some of your old things and- He stopped, finding you gone from the couch, sans for the shirt that you wore this morning. Kitten? He called, his eyes darting around the apartment. Rookie mistake, he immediately thought. Why did he leave a child on their own? He quickly found you climbing onto the window seat with your shirt dragging behind you, soon attempting to climb onto the windowsill. Of an open window. On the fifth floor. Shinzo's heart leapt out of his chest in a panic his breath hitching in his lungs while he felt his feet move on their own. He tripped a little at the start, only slowing when he spotted something black sitting by the windowsill. Toka watched you try to climb, until her paw gently pressed on your forehead with every attempt you made to lift yourself. But I want to! You spoke to the cat, only earning another paw, halting your attempts. Okay, fine. Shinzo watched the scene unfurl as you sat yourself back onto the window seat, having given up on your expedition towards the open window. Toka, who now laid on your small lap, purred against you to her heart's content, lifting her head to welcome all of the pets you could give. You're a nice kitty. You piped stroking Toka's back while she continued to purr. Oh, you mean like this? Shinzo continued to watch you pet Toka, but differently every time. Only hearing his cat's purr deepened the more precise you were with the scratches. He sighed in relief, feeling that spike of adrenaline wane from his body. But he could have sworn you sounded like you were holding a conversation. You can... Hear her? He asked, curious of the situation presented before him. Yeah. You chirped cheerfully. She said she likes the cheek scratch the best. Oh? What about her chin scratches? She said that's for nighttime. Shinso smirked, wondering if you've always had the talent to telepathically speak to animals. It was something you've never accomplished as an adult, having explained that neural patterns between humans and animals were vastly different. Seeing you now being able to communicate with Toka made him wonder if you could tap into this aspect of your ability. Otherwise, like most children, perhaps it was something that you no longer could attune to as you grew older. I can hear animals. You spoke as if answering his thoughts. I talk to them all the time. Really? Yeah, I don't have friends. You spoke so casually that it took Shinso by surprise. 
You had no friends? If anything, that was his line most of his life. He hated to admit that his UA life helped change that perspective, but even more so after he bumped into you that first day of school. You, the one who was bubbly and open, clumsy at times, yet so friendly that at the time it not only shocked him, but was almost sickeningly sweet. I'm not like that. You spoke up, taking Shinso's attention from his head. I'm... No one wants to hang around me. It was like looking in a mirror. Um, you shouldn't think things like that, commented Shinso, approaching you with the few clothes he picked up from the bedroom, kneeling by the window seat. You're a great person. You think so? Yeah, I know so. He appreciated the smile that appeared on your face, brightening the sad thoughts that you voiced out loud. You still stroked Toka's cheek, hearing her purr deeper, almost as if she too voiced her opinion. Toka says you're a good person too. You spoke, passing that message along. <laughs> Alright, time to change you into something else, mused Shinso finally able to change you into something a little more decent. It was a quiet evening afterwards while Shinso watched you enjoy Toka's company. In fact, he noticed Toka following you everywhere you went, supporting you and almost looking out for you in the apartment. Entrusting the feline to keep you out of trouble gave Shinso the opportunity to take care of the apartment itself. Meager chores and cooking dinner being one of the many. Thank you. You piped over the couch while he cleaned the kitchen down in the apartment. You're welcome. He spoke, drying his hands. You're a nice person. You continued. Huh. <laughs> what makes you think I'm nice? Um... Aren't you? You haven't yelled at me or anything for hearing inside your head. Shinso chuckled at your nervousness while your eyes peeked over the back of the couch, anticipating his next move, which entailed just a simple head pat. <laughs> I'll never judge you for your quirk. He started, catching your eye. You're not intruding on anything. That same bright smile returned. Shinso knew he was looking at a reflection of himself, but it only made him humbled by how his perception of the world was so much different when he was younger. He knew in the back of his mind that the future ahead only got brighter despite the pitfalls. In seeing you like this with a smile, only solidified what their future looked like. Eventually, night fell, which entailed putting you to sleep, deciding to put you in the bedroom while he took the couch. However, you refused to sleep alone, wanting to stay with Shinso instead, crawling out of the bed and climbing onto the couch, nuzzling into its chest. Shinso felt you next to him, your body warm, and yet something else pressed against his clothes, feeling a slightly warmer sensation, a radiating heat that pricked like a needle. But his exhaustion from the day overpowered him, too tired to contemplate on that feeling before he pulled a thin throw over the both of you. He drifted to sleep but not before he caught soft whispers from your drowsy state that resonated in his ear. I like you. <sighs> Sunlight pierced through the window 
Hoshinso squinted from the burn he could feel and see through his eyelids. He groaned in distaste, wishing that he did stay in the bedroom that would have been shrouded with curtains. It would have saved him the uncalled-for wake-up call. He shifted on the couch until he found an arm draped over his torso, finding you next to him, fully grown, fitting snugly into the shirt he chose for you yesterday. You nuzzled into his chest, refusing to wake from your deep slumber. Shinso, on the other hand, felt the need to leave you to your bed rest, due in part to the visions you received from Seek over the course of the month and having lost sleep over him. He hoped to slip from your grasp and not disturb you. However, a small paw pressed against his forehead, halting his movements. Shinso glanced upwards to find Toka's nose grazing his skin while she sat by the arm of the couch, her paw resting gently yet firmly on his head. Her blue eyes stared into Shinso's violet ones, welcomed by a smile from the man who immediately scratched her cheek in return. Uh, good girl. He uttered quietly, petting Toka gently. He soon made himself comfortable on the couch, shifting in place before he felt your body shape into his. I love you. Shinzo's body froze while he looked down at your sleepy state, hugging into him closer. Did he just hear that right? It brought a warm smile on his face to hear your voice again. But even so, Hearing those words after what he had learned about you gave it more meaning than its token value. Shinso wrapped his arms around your back, rubbing his fingers tenderly along your sides and stared at the ceiling with contentment and joy. Until that sensation returned from last night. But this time it was atop his chest, staring down to find the cat's eye stone loosely on his clothes. A casual brush of his fingers against the semi-precious stone made him realize that it was the source of this heat lingering onto him. It was a strange phenomena for something so small and isolated to be affected this way, causing him to wonder again about Seek. Still probably tied in that basement should he had not attempted to escape. Shinso returned his eyes towards the ceiling, the overjoyed feeling having waned from his expression, now contemplating on what was to come. I love you too, kitten. But we have a job to do. Thank you for tuning in to another fan fiction reading. If you enjoy what I do or would just prefer to fall asleep to my voice, please hit that like button, ring that bell, and um, <laughs> subscribe to my channel. <laughs> I'm so excited to have actually finished um, at least this portion of the series. Like, it's. It's been a ride. Um, but also it has started to snowball into something larger than life. Um, I hope whatever installments come in the future will be just as entertaining. I have, um, a handful to go through actually, but, um, I've got even more that I'd like to continue writing and completing hopefully very soon. But as always, thank you for visiting. I hope to hear from you soon. Next we meet.